Welcome to Unit 5, Lesson 4. Today we're going to start Cartesian vectors, and we're going to look at Cartesian vectors in R2 space. A squared represents two-dimensional vector space, and you'll see me referring to it as either R2 space or two dimensions. Um, I'll use them interchangeably. Your textbook will use R2. So Cartesian vectors. Simple vector quantities can be expressed geometrically. However, as the applications become more complicated or involve a third dimension, you will need to be able to express vectors in the Cartesian coordinates, that is, what you know as x, y, and z coordinates. Suppose that u is any vector in this plane with endpoints q and r. We identify QR as a Cartesian vector because its endpoints can be defined using Cartesian coordinates. We identify the vector QR as a Cartesian vector because its endpoints can be defined using Cartesian coordinates. Let's say we translate the vector U so that its tail is at the origin. Oh then its head will be at the endpoint of P with the coordinates of AB. We can define the special Cartesian vector as a position vector. So notice that a point has round brackets, and to denote a vector, we use square brackets. So any vector in the Cartesian plane can be moved such that it starts at the origin so that it is a position vector. Uh, they usually lie on the axis, so if we take i, i actually lies on the x-axis, uh, and j lays, lies on the y-axis. Okay, so as you can see, the head of i on the x-axis is at 1 and 0, and the head of j is on the y-axis at 0 and 1. So to write this out again in Cartesian notation, um, the vector i is equal to 1, 0, and of course j, 0, 1. i, 1 and 0, and j, 0 and 1. Looking at vector u, u is resolved into its horizontal and vertical vector components a and b. So the magnitude of the horizontal vector a is collinear to the unit vector i. Okay. Similarly, the magnitude of the vertical vector B is collinear to the unit vector of J. So finally, what we can do then is we can simply take the magnitudes of each of those components and multiply it to the unit vectors that it is collinear to, and then add them together in this linear combination. So we express, so we can express any vector as a linear combination of the unit vectors. Let's talk about the magnitude of a vector. So any vector can be translated so that its head is at the origin, 0, 0. And its tail is pointing to some point. So in this case, we've got the vector v, and it's pointing to this point v1 and v2. So we can find the magnitude of the vector by using the formula for distance between two points. And since we are starting at the origin, the magnitude of v, of the vector v, actually simplifies to this equation. In order to add Cartesian vectors, if we took the vectors u and v uh, with components of u1 and u2, and for v, the components of v1 and v2, in order to illustrate our formula, we would simply add all of the horizontal components of both of the vectors and then add the vertical components in order to get our corresponding sum. And you'll see that this property for Cartesian vectors is very useful in answering uh, those questions that we had gone through before with geometric vectors, but now we'll be able to break them up into components. So moving on to multiplying Cartesian vectors by a scalar. If we let u be the vector with components of u1 and u2, and k, our scalar, belongs to the set of real numbers. We can say that k times the vector u is equal to k times each of the components within that vector. 
So therefore, we can then conclude that k times u1 and k times u2 is equal to ku. Okay, so now that your brain is completely full of all the terminology for Cartesian vectors, let's finally go through our first example. So example number one, given the vectors a is equal to five and negative seven, and b is equal to two and three, we're gonna determine each of the following. So first off, let's express um, vector a in terms of its horizontal and vertical vector components. Okay, b, an expression for b in terms of i and j, c, three times a, uh, d, a plus b, e, 2a minus 4b, and then f, uh, two unit vectors collinear with a and g. Uh, we're going to find the magnitude of a minus b. Okay, so let's slowly work through this. Okay, let's look at part a. So we want to express the vector a uh, in its horizontal and vertical components. So we have the vector a is then equal to, and we had 5 plus the vertical component, negative 7, okay? And of course, part b, we want to express the vector b. And I'm just going to rewrite the vector b as 2 and 3 as combinations of i and j. So 2 times a i, the vector i, plus 3 times the vector j, okay? And that's how we would answer that one. Okay, C part, we want to now have 3a, okay? So 3, so a, I just want to rewrite over, over here maybe. a then is equal to 5 and negative 7, okay? So then we can just simply say 3 times this is a scalar multiplication, so 5 and negative 7. You can then say 15. Okay, and uh, negative 21. Oops, negative 21. Okay, so D part, we can write D over here. Let's write D over here. Save some space. So D, we said now we wanted to write out A plus B. Okay, we can write each of the vectors out. So 5 and negative 7 plus 2 and 3. Okay, and adding each component. So first we'll do the horizontal components. So adding 5 and 2. I'll write it out in long. Negative 7 plus 3 our vector a plus b, then is simply 7 and negative 4. Okay, so part E is asking for us to determine 2a minus 4b, okay? So writing that out, so 2, 5 minus 7, minus 4, 2, and 3, okay? So now what we have is 10 minus 14 minus 8 and 12, okay? And then subtracting and simplifying it now further is 2, Okay, and remember it's minus, so it's negative 26. Okay, that's our final answer. Part F is a little bit more involved. Okay, we are to find a vector that is collinear to A. So what we want to do is uh, find actually K A. Okay, so we want to find a value for K. Uh, such that it has a magnitude, so Ka has a magnitude of 1. So let's see, okay, because we have to find a unit vector. So what we can say is the magnitude of Ka is equal to magnitude of K 
times our vector 5 and 7 because that's a. Okay. We want it to equal 1. Okay, so what we're going to say is our magnitude of the vector k times 5k, let's say 5k, and negative 7k. Okay. All right, so in order to find the magnitude, we're going to say 5k squared plus negative 7k squared. Okay, so 25 plus 49, so 74. Okay, 49, 74. 74 k squared. Okay, and that is, of course, and that's all square rooted. Okay. Okay, so if we squared both sides, what we have is still 1. And then we have 74k squared. Okay. And then in this case, then we can then say 1 over 74 is equal to k squared. So k then is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 over 74. Okay. So now in multiplying, okay, let's just simplify this a little bit more. So plus or minus 1 over square root of 74. And I'm sorry, you can't see that. There you go. So k is equal to plus or minus 1 over the square root of 74. But we now need to multiply that to our vector, a. So ka then is equal to, take 5 over the square root of 74, okay, so 7 over the square root of 74. So in finding a unit vector that is collinear to the vector, we just simply divide it, each component, by the magnitude, okay? Fine, let's finish this off with with doing g here, okay, so we want the magnitude of a minus b. So let's find um, a minus b, which is 5 minus 2, and negative 7 minus 3. Okay, so that would give us the magnitude of 3 and negative 10. Then we have, you now we're actually find the magnitude, so 3 squared plus negative 10 squared is equal to the square root of 109. Okay, and that's our final answer. Okay, so up until this point, we looked at vectors. We've been looking at vectors that start at the origin, uh, and we can, or we can move to the origin and um, change to a position vector. Let's take a look at Cartesian vectors between two points. So let's look at generic points of P1 and P2, we'll let them be points on the coordinate plane, okay? So we can then say that a vector from P1 to P2 then is equal to P10, or P10, okay, plus OP2. Okay, so what we've done here is now we're adding these vectors. Okay, let me just draw in the arrow so that you can see exactly what I'm, I, I'm doing here. I think the arrows are there, we just can't really see them too well. So P0 plus 0P2, like that. So if we add these two vectors, we would then get this vector. Okay, so in simplifying, we can then just say that if we take the, the difference in the horizontal components and the difference in the vertical components, we would have the components of the vector between the two points. Let's take a look at one quick example. So example number two, we want to find the coordinates and the magnitude of the vector a, b, four, and that should say four. Um, a is one and three, and the point b, seven and two. Let's, let's see how this is done. Vector now. Okay, so first let's find the coordinates. So A, B, okay, so those are the two points, A and B, um, and we want to uh, find their difference. So it's X2 minus X1, okay, and Y2 minus Y1, okay, 
Okay, so we can then just take our points, uh, 7 minus 1 and 2 minus 3 will give us the vector 6 and negative 1. Okay, so if we want to now find the magnitude of AB, we can simply just use our distance formula. So 6 squared plus negative 1 squared is equal to the square root of 37. Okay, so that's our magnitude. Okay, so finally, let's look at a word problem. Okay, so in this example, a ship's course is set to travel at 23 kilometers per hour relative to the water on a heading of 040. Okay, so that's true bearing. A current of 8 kilometers per hour is flowing from a bearing of 160, so 160 degrees. So write each vector as a Cartesian vector, and then B, we're going to find the resultant velocity of the ship. So in this case, we are using true bearing, or true, uh, yes, true bearing. And the first thing, remember, we always do is we always draw a diagram, okay? So here's my north, south, west, east, okay? Uh, and I have, let's see now, if we want to, the ship is traveling in a heading of 040. So from, let's do this in a different color. Okay, so that's 40 degrees. Okay, and we can conclude that this is then 50 degrees. We're going to say that this is the ship, so we'll say the vector ship. Okay. So by now you know that the horizontal component, hope you've done enough practice, that is just the cosine times your magnitude, which is 23 cosine of your angle. Okay, so if we want to redraw this so that you can see it in a different way, you can always just look at this. Okay, so this would be 23, this would be theta. Okay, so horizontal component is adjacent over hypotenuse. This is opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so those sides then are 23 cosine of 50 degrees and then 23 sine in this case would be sine of 50 degrees. Okay, all right. So now we have the current flowing from a bearing of 160. So I'm just going to draw 160 is around here. So we're going to say this is 160. Okay, from, so the arrow is actually this way. Okay, so that's from. So if we have now, and we said that the current was 8 kilometers per hour, we said this is 23 kilometers per hour. Okay, so our component then. We extend it out this way. So I'm just going to rewrite it right here. So our current then is equal to, if we then know, okay, so okay, so let's use our x axis, okay, as our reference. So if we said that this angle here, let's see what this angle is with the current, that's 90. In, in this case here it would be, this would be 10, so this is 90, all of it is 160. This would be 70, this would be 10, which means that this is 10. This entire would be 110 degrees. My mistake. That would make sense if that was 20 for us to be 110 there. So that's 20, um, and so that would be 20 there, here. Okay, so that would make this 110. Okay, so the current we're going to say is 8 times the cosine of 110 degrees and 8 sine of 110 degrees. Okay, if you need to, you can redraw the triangle if you'd like in order to find these components. Um, in this case, I always know that horizontal is cosine and vertical is uh, sine. Okay, 
So now we can say, uh, let's see. So it seems as though we've actually answered part A. So let's go on to part B. B. B wants us to find the resultant. Okay, we're going to do this um, using Cartesians. And I know in the past you've just done this with um, geometric, but this is another method. Okay, so what we have here is the resultant is then the, the ship's um, speed plus the current. Okay, so we can just add the two Cartesian components or Cartesian vectors, 23 cosine of 50 degrees, 23 sine of 50 degrees, plus 8 cosine of 110 degrees and 8 sine of 110 degrees. Okay, add those together. Okay, so this would add with this one. Okay, and uh, this would add with, with this. So let's punch that in our calculators, and I've already got it sort of worked out here. So it'd be 12.0 and 25.1. It's our vector. So that is our resultant in Cartesian. Now, if we wanted to find the magnitude of R, then we can simply use our equation for magnitude. So 12.0 squared plus 25.1 squared should give us the magnitude, and it's 27.9, OK? OK, so remember that it is a vector, so what we've got is this would be 27.9, okay? Uh, we need to find the bearing. This is what I'm doing right now, is finding the bearing. So each of these parts of, the, of this R are uh, the components here. So the horizontal component then is 12.0 and 25.1. So we want to find this angle, theta. So we can say that theta is equal to uh, tan tan theta is then equal to 12.0 over 25.1. So then theta, working out in your calculator, is 25.6. And that's our final answer. So therefore, the ship is traveling, hopefully you're much neater than I am, at a velocity. of 27.9 kilometers per hour at a bearing of, we were given true, uh, true bearing, so we'll answer it in true bearing, 25.6 degrees. Okay. And you probably want to see the end. Okay. So that would be our final answer.